Welcome to a very special challenge video. I am your host, PKMX, and... You're probably wondering what's going on here. Well, after 19 years of being a dry balls and refusing to drink alcohol, I have decided that now is a good time to start. I was recently introduced to this brand new drinking game called Down Your Drink Every Time the SEC F***s Up, and I just couldn't resist. So I am going to become a real man by completing this challenge. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Well, as I recover from alcohol poisoning, I should try to fill the next 13 minutes with some kind of LibreSir content. You might have watched that boring video essay about the SEC that I made in August last year, and I'm really sorry if you did. I recently deleted that video from my channel because it was just unwatchable, so I should probably replace it with something better. I have complained about the leaving cert enough on this channel, so I think it's time I take a more objective approach. In this video, I will provide an overview of how the Irish education system works, and we're going to rewind back to its origins. The Irish government's first efforts to truly revolutionise their education system can be traced back to the 1960s. Ah, the good old days, when being left-handed meant that you were the Antichrist. This was a time when child abuse, I mean, corporal punishment, was completely acceptable in primary schools, and the teachers were members of the Catholic Church, so of course they didn't suffer any consequences. Ireland was almost completely cancelled in the 50s, but the 60s was a decade of significant social and cultural advancements. More people were questioning and criticising the values of the Catholic Church, women were allowed to have human rights, and young Irish people started to receive more educational opportunities than previous generations. Ireland has an interesting track record with change and modernization. It's an incredibly progressive nation on paper, but that progress usually happens a few decades too late and Ireland remains a completely backwards country. This was evident in the 1960s, as the Irish government overhauled the education system so it was more fit for purpose in the modern world. Just imagine if they would do that today. But despite this, the Catholic Church maintained their influence over Irish schools. It made perfect sense to trust the Catholic Church with this responsibility though, because we all know that they have a great reputation for taking care of children. Right? If education is supposed to entail traumatising children for life with physical and emotional abuse, then the Catholic Church gets a hedge one. Irish schools were still controlled by nuns and Christian brothers in the 60s, but the entire framework of education experienced some positive changes. The 50s was a rough time for education in Ireland, as one third of Irish students were leaving their education after completing primary school. It was clear that education needed to be more accessible, so entry fees for second level schools were abolished in 1967. Ever since this huge announcement, education in Ireland has been 100% Free. Whoa, wait a minute. You're saying that people in Ireland go to school for free? Well, enrolling in school is completely free, but you will have to pay extortionate amounts of money for uniforms, textbooks and copies, voluntary school funds that aren't voluntary at all, and you have to pay 116 euro to sit the leaving cert. Oh. But if you have a medical card, the leaving cert is free. Oh, well that's fair. It makes it more affordable for people with med- But if you're repeating sixth year, you'll have to fork over 301 euro. Despite these huge expenses, Ireland is internationally recognised for its excellent literacy rates, student progression to third level, and its high quality education system in general. Under the current educational model, Irish students receive compulsory education for up to 14 years. This includes 8 years of primary school and 5 or 6 years of secondary school. Children start their first year of primary school, junior infants, at the age of 4 or 5. Yes, 4 or 5. Not a reasonable age like 6 or 7, because we need to cram as much information into their brains as humanly possible. They have to work their way up the ranks until they reach their final year of secondary school at the age of 17 or 18, when they prepare to sit the Leaving Cert. At this point in their educational careers, they must make significant decisions about their future, and they're expected to act like adults while being treated like kids. Let's say you want to go to the bathroom. In junior infants, you have to put up your hand and ask, on Mulcadigum Dolgudi on Leheris, whereas in Leaving Cert you have to put up your hand and ask On Mulcadigum Dolgudi on Leheris. So you go to school for 14 years and it's all tested in two weeks of exams because that's completely fair. These exams are known as the Leaving Cert, but intellectuals like myself prefer to say Leaving Certificate Examinations. Students usually study seven exam subjects for the Leaving Cert, but only six of those subjects are counted towards their final results. It would probably make more sense to study four or five exam subjects so the workload wouldn't become overwhelming, but again, cram as much information into their brains as humanly possible. You see, there's a running theme here. We have this unique grading system 
system which was introduced just a few years ago, but nobody over the age of 21 seems to understand it. Leaving certain junior cert subjects can be taken at higher level or ordinary level, but some cavemen prefer to say honours and pass. Oh, and foundation level maths also exists if you're content with receiving a maximum of 20 points in that subject and being ineligible for almost every college course in the country. The difference in points achievable between higher level and ordinary level subjects is pretty drastic, and this is reflected in the difficulty of both levels. Ordinary level English. Write an essay about a few poems which are provided on the exam paper. Higher level English. Learn 36 poems off by heart. Ordinary level Irish. Write a half a page about a tempesta. Higher level Irish. Write four pages about how climate change and pollution are affecting the planet. Also learn the life stories of every poet on the course and make sure you know their birthdays and their blood type. Higher level exams are far more difficult of course, but the content is the same for both levels. If you ask me, the problem with the Leaving Cert isn't the content in the curriculum. We study a lot of intriguing material. In English we study Shakespearean plays and The Great Gatsby and A Hundred Poems. In History we learn about the Troubles and the Moon Landing. And in Irish we study... I just can't explain that. The Irish language is on a huge decline, we all know that. But why do so many Irish people dislike our national language? A uh, simple answer, because in schools, the Irish language is taught like shit. You may argue that the language is alive and well because it's spoken regularly by almost 75,000 people. But here's a secret. That's 1.5% of the population. Irish is supposed to be a fun language that we appreciate as a vital part of our culture but it's almost impossible to enjoy the language when we're using shit like this to learn it. The general theme of study text on the Leaving Cert Irish course is misery. If you ever want to feel depressed from reading a work of fiction, then look no further. Let's summarize the stories that you have to study in Leaving Cert Irish. Cockamillish, a blind man gets in a train to go on holiday. He dies. Anganarod, a lovable family man doesn't like going to the pub, so he goes home to see his family. He dies. He also got blood all over his chop suey. That's pretty cringe if you ask me. Deesh. A married couple talk about a survey, but the husband ignores his wife. That's it. Uh, that's everything that happens. We had to write about why that story is funny. When the Department of Education were figuring out how Irish should be taught in schools, I imagine the thought process was something like this. Hmm. Should students learn how to speak Irish in everyday conversation? And should we encourage them to appreciate the language and have fun speaking it? Or should we force them to rote learn multiple essays and vocabulary describing 5 poems, 5 stories and 20 picture stories, thereby killing their interest in the language? The Irish syllabus has received a lot of criticism for basically failing to teach our national language in an engaging way and completely sucking the fun out of learning it. The Leaving Cert in general is heavily criticised around this time of year, to the point where it becomes an annual media circus and a huge topic of national conversation but everybody stops caring about it until August when it becomes topical again. When you're preparing for the Leaving Cert, you are certainly going to hear some variation of these exact words at least a hundred times. The Leaving Cert is not a test of intelligence. It is just a memory test that rewards mindless rote learning and it does not encourage critical thinking. The point system is outdated and isn't fit for purpose in the modern world. I failed my Leaving Cert and I am now an entrepreneur. Exam results do not define you and no matter what you get, there will always be a back door into anything you'd like to do. Of course I agree with this argument, but it's getting incredibly boring now. And it doesn't highlight the real problem with the Leaving Cert. The Leaving Cert is the climax of second level education, but I wouldn't consider this education at all. It's basically a national contest between 55,000 students to obtain the most points and progress to the third level. The Leaving Cert becomes less about educating students for life, and it turns into this game of analysing past exam papers, predicting the topics that will come up, and selecting the right chapters to study in order to achieve the highest number of points possible. There's no long term objective beyond attaining points to get into college. We all lose sight of what education actually is, and we simply don't care about learning anything that will benefit us once the Leaving Cert is over. With the structure of the education system heavily revolving around exams and academic achievement, we all perceive the Leaving Cert as nothing more than a pathway to third level education. We spend two years memorising information temporarily, which will be completely forgotten on results day when the objective of receiving points has been achieved. Because of this attitude, everything we learn in the senior cycle becomes redundant. Even the SEC knows this, because your exam papers which epitomise your two years of Leaving Cert study aren't even sent back to you. 
The SEC destroys them. Our education has no positive consequence for us in the real world, and we hit the reset button when we move on to college or work. But why is the Leaving Cert so backwards and unfit for purpose in the 21st century? Why is so little effort being made to modernise the entire system? And why has it remained almost the exact same for so many decades? Well, the Leaving Cert exams are designed and distributed by an organisation known as the State Examination Commission, and they are really good at their job. That was a joke. The SEC is in charge of an entire exam system that determines if a student can advance to third level education, which is obviously a huge responsibility that should be taken incredibly seriously. But they manage to f something up every single year and I am getting sick of this drinking game. A recent epidemic is the shortage of Leaving Cert examiners. They have to take on an overwhelming workload throughout the entire month of July for an unattractive wage, 58% of which is taxed. So less teachers are willing to sign up for this role. This could have been addressed and rectified back in 2017, but if there's one thing the SEC is good at, it's refusing to acknowledge their own mistakes and not making any changes to how they operate. So due to the SEC's complete lack of self-awareness, the trend of urgently appealing for more examiners continued in 2018 and 2019. Remember, you should never start studying for the Leaving Cert at the last minute. But the SEC can start searching for examiners at the last minute. Remember, you can't do your essay the night before it's due. But you are expected to write multiple essays for English, Irish, Art, History and Geography in 3 hour exams. Remember, you should never plagiarise other people's work. But the SEC can take articles and change them without permission, and as you may have heard, that worked out brilliantly this year. I have spent a lot of time sitting at this desk complaining about the Leaving Cert in various videos, but I'm getting tired of listening to the same criticisms in June and August every year. The biggest problem that prevents any meaningful change is entirely our own fault. Whenever we are presented with an opportunity to learn anything useful, everybody treats it like it's some kind of joke. The Leaving Cert is such a familiar rite of passage, it has been so engraved in our culture for as long as we can remember, that the idea of education revolving around terminal exams is completely standard. Everybody cries out for mental health classes, which is actually part of the SPHE syllabus, but of course, SPHE is treated like a throwaway subject, and is typically used as extra study time for the exam subjects. CSPE, Civic, Social and Political Education, one of the most fundamentally useful subjects you can possibly learn, is treated like a joke. We have this inherent obsession with exams and rote learning information, so we can't comprehend the idea of education revolving around anything else. In my now deleted SEC video essay, I detailed my idea of an improved education system. My suggested curriculum was divided into three sectors, personal development, job and life skills, and general education. I also proposed new subjects like finance, mental health and well-being, and classes about consent and sexuality acceptance. However, a hypothetical system like this would never work in this country. As a nation, we just do not have the mindset necessary for a system like this to succeed, because non-exam subjects would be shoved to the side. Nobody would take it seriously, because this country doesn't know what education is. The Leaving Cert will never change, and if it did, it would be destined for failure, because Ireland can't do anything without fucking it up. Well, if you're blessed with the luxury of not living in Ireland, then I hope this video helps you to understand how education works in this country. This video is marking the end of an era on my channel, because I'm officially retiring from making videos about the Leaving Cert. Now that I'm feeling better and I have this stupid Leaving Cert video done and dusted, I'm gonna try out this drinking game again. I hate my liver anyway. Guess who just signed up for Alcoholics Anonymous? Be a villain number one You have to chase a super beast.